Ladies and gentlemen, come to the microphone. <laughs> That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, this genius is the victim of Neptune being particularly afflicted in my chart. <laughs> if you believe in astrology, and I do. And I was warned this morning to watch out. And uh, what happened is, you see this box there? The cover for box number one is on box number two, and the cover for number two is on one. How stupid of me to do this. But I did it, I apologize, but I'm here. And I hope you will see it. Perhaps we would like to take a, uh, a small little break while we just load the slides. If you can just beg your indulgence for a couple minutes more, we'll load the slides Fine, and then we'll, you we'll take off really on track. Okay? Thank you. Um, now to the serious side of things. Uh, all the years that I've worked in psychical research, I've come across one phenomenon that is more puzzling than anything else that um, I might encounter in, in research. There is a um, group of uh, professional parapsychologists, serious, dedicated people, uh, who suffer from an allergy. Uh, the allergy is not curable in their lifetime, but it is curable right afterwards. Um, what I'm talking about is the uh, acceptance of a, uh, what I call the world, Irene called it once, the world next door. Uh, the other side, the other side of life, um, makes them very nervous. That's the first allergy they have. They also have a set, some of them, most of them, in fact, have a second allergy. They don't like mediums. Now, we all know mediums are like Madame McCarthy on the stage, and uh, she does funny things. And that is a problem because it, it, a lot of things will escape them by denying the evidence for both the other side of life, for life of the death, if you wish, and for the fine work done by competent mediums. The late Hans Bender in Freiburg, to his dying day, could not accept either one. And, uh, I mean, he was a fine researcher with that limitation. Uh, when I was invited to speak at the university in, in Freiburg, he uh, took precautions. He wrote the review of my lecture before I delivered it, but he delivered it to the two newspapers, the Social Democratic and the Christian Socialist, just to be sure that the right, that, that the truth gets out there before any minds get poisoned and all kinds of stuff happens. Um, that's one of the things that I can point out to you. So, what I'm saying is that uh, I'm not one of those fellows. Um, because um, life is energy. And energy can never be <coughs> destroyed. It can only be transmuted. Can you hear me without this? Yes. The hell with this mic. And if you can hear me, I don't need it. <laughs> um, looks like I've shaved it. Oh, but you, can you hear me there? Yes. Can you hear me? As long as the okay. Um, this has very good acoustics, so it should be able to hear me. It's enough to go back to the energy Einstein has told us and energy can never be destroyed. It can only be transmuted and transformed. Now, if that is so, and it is, then quite obviously we are a complex combination of energy and um, it, we cannot just disappear from this planet completely. Um, I have long been convinced that within our physical bodies that runs a duplicated inner body, like a, like a pneumatic tire inside the outer, the, the outer tire on which the car arrives, there's the, there's the inner tire that, that keeps going if, if the outer tire is no longer there, it keeps going for a little while. But of course the inner body keeps going much longer than that. Uh, there is this duplicate of 
and that in that duplicate we live not in that outer layer we, the outer layer is the um, is the suit the inner layer is us and all our emotions all our knowledge uh, all that which we represent as human beings is uh, deposited in that layer but because it is connected for the physical lifetime with the outer layer uh, we have uh, the perception that the physical body is also the seat for personality which in fact it is not it has no life of its own uh, at the time of dissolution of personality at the time of death it is totally lifeless and has no value for the inner body when that uh, separation occurs but the inner body is continuing to uh, be the vehicle to be the receptacle for everything we are, everything we've created in our lifetime. And um, coincidentally, I have just recently worked with a British medium, uh, uh, astonishing fellow, uh, by the name of Philip Solomon, who has, uh, who's one of the great deep trance mediums for our time. And uh, together we have put together what I call the protocols of his uh, trans sessions with hundreds of people describing what is life like on the other side. It's a little bit like a travel log. So those who will go there eventually, all of us, will have a better idea what life is like on the other side. Um, I take this quite seriously as simply a continuation of life. And uh, uh, I have nothing against the organized religion. It has its place. Um, but in none of these uh, descriptions have we encountered ladies with goose feathers on their back or fellows in red underwear with pitchforks so far. Mm. But then again, we don't know what's yet ahead. Uh, there is, however, a world that exists co-centrically um, co with this world. It isn't up or down, left or right. It is around us. It is merely, um, and I should explain this before we go to the pictures, um, it can fill the same spatial area because it vibrates at a different rate of speed, a little bit like polarized light and ordinary light can coexist in the same physical space because they uh, uh, vibrate, if you wish, or they move at different uh, angles to each other so they don't hit each other. And the, uh, the difference between the physical world and our physical bodies and the uh, other side and our spiritual bodies, etheric bodies if you wish, um, is simply a rate of speed. It is just as material as this world, but it is the particles are strung together at a different um, uh, and in a different way. Uh, in the physical world, the particles are quite close to each other, creating the feeling of density in a physical three-dimensional world. At, in the other side world, the particles are strung further out. There's more space in between. And therefore, uh, it is a less denser world, but in principle, it is also a tangible tangible world. It is also consisting of particles of energy. And here we come to that old story about energy and matter being really one under different conditions, different pressures, different different conditions, uh, but they are one and the same. Um, it's a little bit like Swiss cheese. Um, the, the holes are different between the physical world and the next world. Next door is the world we call the other side. But it is as tangible, as real to those who are in it. And the important thing is that while we can only visit there by speeding up our particles movement temporarily, if you wish, or permanently after we pass into it, and they, on the other hand, can slow down their movement easily if they wish to visit with us. That's much easier than the other way around. Uh, having said this, and having been a half hour late, I will now go to the part that is more important, perhaps, than some of my illuminations. Um, 
psychic photography came into being, as I'm sure you've heard, in the uh, 1880s, and a fellow named Mumler, um, in, uh, I believe in Boston, uh, accidentally stumbled upon that in the days of wet plates, in the days when photography was, was primitive, and in the days when, of course, it was easy to fake psychic photographs. I'm not saying that he did or that anybody else necessarily did, but with the technical, um, the technical uh, conditions of the, uh, the past, at least in principle, uh, counterfeiting spirit pictures, psychic photography, was possible. It is no longer possible in a world where we have Polaroid photography, or even in a world where we can strictly su uh, supervise the conditions under which a picture is taken. Now, I'd like to say this right up front. Everything that you're going to see was taken under conditions, both camera, film, or Polaroid picture, <coughs> that totally excludes counterfeiting, fakery, or illusion. None of this is counterfeit. I, I was there when it was taken, or I brought the film, or the film was inspected by me. All the usual, which we call scientific test conditions, have been observed. So, if you have any doubts about something you're going to see, one of the things you have to exclude, which is fakery, accidental overexposure, underexposure, light leaks, and whatever else you want. Those things do not take place here. Finally, I should explain, as, as if you didn't know this, of course, that pictures um, have occurred in three categories. The, the, just as the uh, citizens of the world next door fall into different categories. <coughs> When somebody has passed on and wishes to let us know of that fact, then we are dealing with spirit photography. When somebody has died traumatically in a, in a, in a trauma which uh, shows that uh, that person has not adjusted to the world he is now in, because sometimes it's in the world in between that such a person unfortunately stuck. Neither of that world nor still of ours, we call them ghosts, phantoms, that's another category. And finally there are a vast amount of photographic uh, records of energy itself. That is to say, um, uh, what used to be called ectoplasm in being, in building before it is formed into a form of a human being, enormous amounts of energy can be photographed in this manner, sometimes in churches, because in churches a lot of this energy is created by prayer. Uh, sometimes um, with a deep trance medium allowing it to come from his or her body. But they are not really people yet, but they are things that oughtn't to be there under ordinary conditions. All right. Now, um, with that, having said that, by the way, I think we ought to go in Medias race. As they used to say in Rome, I didn't say it, I wasn't there. Did you have? You need the lights out. Can we get the ceiling lights out? What you see here on the right is a picture of my late mother that appeared spontaneously on unexposed photographic paper before millions of television viewers on Channel 5 in New York. To my amazement and to the great amazement of Mike Wallace because he's a really skeptic, if you pardon the expression. But there it was. And I matched it with a photograph of my late mother from the uh, family album. Now, there's no way this could have happened. Mike Wallace bought a pack of unexposed photographic paper. Mind you, no camera. All I brought was a man named John Myers, a dentist from England, 
who was a physical medium, a photography medium, his presence, his body, is the camera. He had no way to touch the paper, no way to interfere in anything. All he was doing, he sat there and he said, now. And at that moment, this happened. No way it could be otherwise. You can clearly see this is the same person, although in a more spiritual way, and you see these whitish things there, because it takes energy matter to create these uh, photographs on the light uh, sensitive surface. Let's get the next one. This was done under my supervision in John Myers' apartment when we were experimenting for possible uh, spirit photographs, among others, and again on the test condition, what showed up was this uh, face on the left. It turned out to be a, an aunt of mine, to which of course John Myers would have no access or knowledge even. She died during the war, we don't know where, but she died. And on the right you can see that she looked like the right. The young woman. May I have the next one? I then went to San Francisco, where uh, this man lived. Um, Dr. Andrew von Salzer is a medical doctor specializing in re rejuvenation therapy. And he is very embarrassed by the fact that he has mediumship of a psychic kind. He, the psychic mediumship started in his life rather as a surprise. Uh, he is a photography buff and he uh, took some pictures at a surgery belonging to a colleague of his. Just, just for the fun of it, there was no intention. And unfortunately, the portrait of a young woman that had died that morning on that other surgeon's uh, table showed up which caused uh, his comic to throw him out, accusing him of fakery, and uh, it also evoked my interest. So what you see here is so patently fake uh, that one would think it is, but it isn't. Because I was there to film this, this is Polaroid film, and people show up here, interesting enough, who are great celebrities. Now one would say, say, oh, celebrities. But the same body celebrities have also shown in other photography sessions elsewhere. They are just hams. They would like to do this. <laughs> um, the one on the left is uh, Al Smith. Uh, the one on the right is one of the Rockefellers, the uh, elder Rockefeller. There was no way uh, Dr. Van Salzer could have think. There's no way. Let's try the next one. Yes, again. Uh, I think we have them reversed, but it doesn't matter. The word war appears up there um, on the wall. This was in the 60s during the uh, uh, Vietnam War. The word war suddenly appeared on this. Like It looks like soap, but it isn't. Uh, the, you know, the left and right are reversed, but we can do that. Can you do something about that? No. Yeah, we go on. Okay. Next. Now, I wasn't there when this was taken. This Indian guy uh, belonged to this lady who long since passed away in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. I can't vouch for this one, but this woman has a lifetime of honesty behind her. And I thought one should include it. It's an interesting picture. Allegedly, these are some uh, spirit people who have communicated through her. Next, please. If you see this, um, I think there is another one. Underneath is a portrait, another portrait, upside down. Um, what happened was, a, a photographer, in, a professional photographer in Los Angeles was doing a school picture and on the day it was supposed to be taken, one of the teachers died and wasn't there for the picture, for the group picture. Uh, she went home, closed up shop, <coughs> took, uh, took the um, 
uh, last picture out of the printer and, uh, and locked up. The next morning, she inserted the first picture from, from other source, and lo and behold, underneath was the dead teacher's portrait. He wanted to be not forgotten. Next thing. Um, the lady on the right is Sybil Lee, the great medium. The lady on the left, the very famous actress Vivian Lee. Uh, Sybil Lee went to a uh, New York photography studio for some publicity shots. And they were normal shots, most of them, except this one. Uh, Vivian Lee appeared in it which was rather shocking since, uh, as far as Sybil was concerned, she was well and hearty in England. Her body was only found 24 hours after this picture was taken. Uh, Alright again, I think it's upside down. Ah, yes. Um, a um, reputable New York medium, Betty Ritter, with whom I've worked for years, um, took this picture under controlled conditions. Um, the medium had just been communicating with a man who said who wanted to be recognized. He had lost a leg in life and he needed some way to be recognized. There's no way this white thing <coughs> appeared on this picture. No way. Now well, here we have just energy. Uh, a body is apparently trying to form. You can see it looks like a shoulder and an arm, but I don't have any head. It looks like a woman's body. Um, there's a woman who specializes in these things. She can produce these things under test conditions at will. What's her name? It's, it's a form of energy, of course, or matter, if you wish, depending on which angle you look at it. Next week. This is more of the same. The whitish thing uh, occurs frequently in churches, but this is much more. You see a part of a body forming. Uh, this is all Polaroid material. No way could this have happened in an empty house. I mean, no way. Next week. Uh, this is not a psychic photograph. It's a photograph of a lady with a name. Whose, whose name is Mrs. Powell, upstate New York. She has that gift of being a photography medium. And uh, look what happened. Next. What did happen? What happened was some more pictures were taken in her presence. And do the next one. No, up, step down. Left, I mean, left and right and reversed. The left and right. Well, it doesn't matter. It is a whitey form of a woman. Somebody very close to her had passed and she was taking pictures and just you can see the arm forming um, uh, materializations genuine materializations when they're genuine are always white because the substance used for materializations is albumin and is drawn from the same sources basically that is that are uh, sexual fluids come from the same source and uh, this is a photograph of a partial materialization. Also, again, taking in a way that no victory could have been possible. Next, please. Ah, yes, this is a ghost I didn't take, but it's so famous that the world knows it. It's, um, we're getting out the ghost pictures. Um, a brown lady of Random Hall appeared in Life magazine because it was absolutely genuine. What happened was, that the owners of Raynham Hall um, had uh, hired some photographers to have a survey of the house just for their own personal use. And lo and behold, this, uh, among the pictures with this one, a woman descending the staircase. Well, this woman is coming down from a place where uh, 
a, a very unfortunate woman uh, had been shut up in the last years of her life for what they used to call not being of the right mind. And she died in that condition. She was the sister of uh, Walpole, Lord Walpole, the Prime Minister of that in the 18th century. So it was clearly a woman walking down the stairs. When uh, the uh, uh, current owners saw this, they were not too happy. But Life magazine got hold of it and published it. Next, please. We have to reverse it. Left and right. Oh, Neptune. Let me try it again. Yeah, it should be, can you make it sharper? Yeah, that's good. Turn this on. Over here. <coughs> See this? Three foul monks. Winchester Cathedral. Um, Henry VIII chased the monks out of there and some got killed in the process. Uh, they're walking on a floor that is uh, lower than the one now existing, which makes me think that this is only a psychic impression rather than living monks still existing in a spiritual dimension. And that's one of the problems we have with the um, Visual, with ghost uh, apparitions and, and uh, visual elements, visual um, phenomena. Frequently, they are only imprints from the past and are not living human beings stuck in between the two worlds. Yes, next, please. No, that's clearly upside down. Still upside down. All right. Now try to make it sharper. See this here? I call it the girl in the negligee. It's not a curtain. There are no curtains in this room. This is as sharp as you can make it. Yeah. See this here, this over here is a figure of a young woman in a, in a gown. Kind of. There was no curtains out in the room. And a young woman had been murdered during a wild party in this part of this room, and buried in the garden. Next please. Well, this is upside down. We'll get it right. And this this um, materialization occurred in Long Island. Figure, the woman in her lifetime lived there a long, long time, and the uh, current owner innocently took some pictures. And lo and behold, she had right left. Little old lady still there in the basement of her house. Next. This is, of course, the house in Avenueville, Long Island. There's nothing to be seen except the house. Now, <clears throat> when I investigated this house with Ethel Myers, we took some pictures while she was in deep trance and uh, Let's see what the next one is. <coughs> yeah, well, it's left and right reverse, but still. Uh, these should be sharp images, but they're not. The uh, du double uh, duplicate lines, there's no explanation for this, except 
energy being superimposed upon us by the entity in this area, this room. Next. Um, to the naked eye, this is a room where someone was murdered. The, if you remember the DeFeo case, six people were murdered by this young man who's now serving life in Danemora. But uh, I took this picture with a, uh, this was Polaroid, and none of this was visible to the naked eye, but look what is all in there. All this energy, all this, this it shouldn't be there, but it is. Next. Um, that is an inn in Pennsylvania. Uh, you don't see anything on this, but I'll show you what follows. Um, I was there and with a friend, and she took this picture. Next, please. That is me, and this on the right is somebody else. A boatsman, this is the canal area of Pennsylvania. A boatsman, also named Hans, strangely, died in a fight in this area. This is clearly a materialization photograph. There was nothing visible to the naked eye. <coughs> Next day. Yes, um, um, there's a beautiful house, a beautiful fireplace down on Gramercy Square. Uh, it belonged to a man named Sonnenberg. It's a Sonnenberg mansion. And he was a ladies' man. In fact, He's also buried on the premises, which is against the law. And I went there with a medium, and um, I took some pictures. Now, the next one, uh, try to reverse left and right if you can. Now it's all the way, no, it's upside down now. Okay. Try it upside down. Try it again, try it again. Uh, this is a wall safe. There's a woman's arm reaching out for the safe. You see the hand? Next to you. Um, uh, listen, all the left and rights are reversed. Can you, as you go along, can you just change it? Okay. Now, um, this is taken by a photographer's wife, whom I know, who's a very critical person at uh, Winchester Cathedral, not Winchester Abbey. There's two of them. One is Catholic and one is uh, Church of England. It is the spaghetti effect that is the result of a lot of people praying for long periods of time. They create a reservoir of energy that is just there. Uh, doesn't mean anything except the energy is there. Try the next one. Yeah, this is very interesting because what you see here was taken by the same person at Salisbury Cathedral in the south of England. Now, uh, it is interesting for the following reason. What you see is the letter W. But the letter W, written in medieval script, it so happens that William II, Rufus, is buried there. And he never used the Latin form Guillermus for his name. He used Wilhelmus. And he would have signed with this letter. Next, please. Uh, in a house in County Ross in Ireland, a uh, servant girl keeps serving her master, even though she's been dead for a long time. I photographed the area which she appeared, and there is some whitish substance here. Let's see. You see this to the left. Thank you.
point it out to you. Yeah, you see this? Mm -hmm. On the stairs. No way this should appear on the picture. Next, please. In the Basel Cathedral, um, they had the unfortunate custom of burying people in the walls, and if they were um, breaking some church laws, they buried them while they were still alive. It's a very strange thing. I took this picture. Sorry, the next one, please. Yes. Um, can you make it as sharp as that? In a, uh, on a golf course in Northern California, a group of monks, so happened, uh, they were Franciscans, uh, got into trouble with uh, the church in Spain by um, complaining about the uh, conditions under which the uh, uh, native labor was being treated. Uh, Dr. von Salzer <coughs> went up there with a uh, camera, had no idea, I'd never heard of it, and took two pictures. You'll see the other one next in a moment. This occurred, the faces you can see, they are enveloped by flames. There's only one problem with this. Nobody had ever heard of any monks that far north. The um, uh, research people up in California couldn't help me. But only after I went back to New York and I found in the, with the uh, Hispanic Society uh, up on Broadway, I found a uh, document dated 1532 about this strange labor complaint. And what happened is they complained about how the workers, the native workers being treated. Instead of helping them, the uh, Spanish crown sent the Dominicans from the Presidio in San Francisco. And you know, the Dominicans were the uh, executors of the uh, Inquisition, and they were burned. Uh, I took Sybil Leak up there. She had the slightest idea what this was all about. She went into trance on this golf course. This was taken at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, I asked her about this, and she also talked about monks, and she said, uh, I said, who was the leader of these people? And she said, Jerome, Jerome. Well, it turned out that they were known as the Geronimites fathers, rebels in the church. Now the next one, that's the last one, I think. Sharper if you can. Yeah, here, this is the same group of monks walking on the same golf course. No way anybody could affect this. And there is a story to it, too. I think that's the last one, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. All right, may I have the seating lights again, please? I apologize for some of the problems with the slides, but that happens. I mean, Neptune is a freak. Any questions you want to ask, I'd be very happy to answer. The son and the ten son and the son of creation staff? What is what? Public relations? Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. He, uh, he was a PR guy. He bought this mansion on Family Square. He was known for a ladies' man. And uh, the girl reaching out for the wall safe. It was very interesting. And then he had himself buried on the premises, too. Uh, I mean, people do these things. Uh, but something remains when the physical body is gone. And these are genuine pictures. I mean, uh, they're not thought for. Yeah. They some are, of these, are yeah. some of the films more sensitive towards this kind of thing? Certain cameras, what do you use specifically to get this kind of picture? Uh, people used to think that uh, the uh, uh, infrared pictures would, the infrared pictures would give you some unusual results. Actually, that's not true. I found the high speed film, black and white or color, the higher the speed, the more the result. That was before Polaroid film came along. Polaroid is a high speed film. And then, you know, you use Polaroid. And uh, it's there. But I must, must say this, 
of all the sightings reported about phantoms, about ghosts, um, I'm not talking about the spirits of loved ones. I'm talking about ghosts in, that had that had some some uh, murder or some something like. Um, frequently, they are only impressions from the past. I would say of all the ghostly sightings, 80 percent are not individuals who are still there hung up, maybe 20% of the rest are just imprints from the past and even some very good mediums can't tell the difference. Eileen once explained it to me. She said, if you see the same procession as she saw in a church in England at 3 o'clock every day coming in, these monks are coming in, I forgot the name of their cathedral in, in, in England, the same kind of monks, always at 3 o'clock, always walking the same way. That's a, that's a psychic imprint. But if it changes, or if people see it in different ways or at different times, then it's not an imprint. See, that's the way you can, you can probably tell. Um, either way, it's energy that has not gone, gone away. And, and uh, the camera can be used uh, in, 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 the, in this way. Yeah. How about people with the near-death experience? Have you, have you ever had that any experience? With there have been no photographic evidence for that. The people in the dead experience talk about the tunnel and they talk about seeing the light, but uh, these are not uh, over there, they're over here. You know, the, 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 uh, the, the ghosts and spirits that have been photographed here are in this world, even though they don't belong here. Are they in some kind of conflict? No, I, I would think they are, they are simply either either they like to communicate to uh, let us know that they're still alive, or in the case of ghosts, I think the conflict is um, they're in a traumatic state, uh, don't understand what has happened to them, but they're still here. These are all human beings or imprints of human beings that haven't gone on. No. Because over there, why, why, why manifest when they're over there? They're, they're satisfied. They're, they're settled. Are people younger after they leave this world? Yes, they, they are, uh, Since the other side is a thought world, it's a thought world, but it is three dimensional to them, completely. Anything they think becomes real. Uh, they go back to their favorite time, to their best time in life, which is not. A, a young, my mother came back to uh, what That's appeared right. to be. I saw your mother look yeah. younger. That's yeah, right. yeah much younger. Yeah, yeah, thirties yeah. uh, or something like that. And they can, they can do this. However, if they want to impress uh, on on us who they are, they will have to be careful about this that they don't uh, uh, make us uh, too young, so we won't be recognized. They have to be recognized. Did your mother contact you? Oh yes, my mother has been in touch with me a number of times. Yes, in a dream? No, 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 no. I worked with, with uh, mediums in dream uh, years ago. But no, uh, <coughs> I get messages to a uh, to people like like the English guy uh, uh, Philip Solomon, and obviously I want proof, proof, evidence that this is really my mother talking, and I've been getting it. How can you encourage somebody contacting you? How can you do that? Well, uh, I think the way it works, you mean psych uh, psychically or well, in terms I mean, of photographs? If, if you are in such a hot shot psychic, I mean, uh, just uh, an average person can. They will, they will communicate with you when they get clearance to do it. They have to get clearance. Oh, right. absolutely. I have gone through hundreds and hundreds of, of uh, protocols, reports, and it's always re a reference to getting clearance or asking the big fellow if it's all right to stay or have to leave. This is a very orderly world. Does prayer help? The prayer, prayer? If you are a person who believes in prayer, it will certainly... Did I receive... Uh, yeah, prayer is a state of mind, but it's not, this is not religion. Religion no, is... No, other than religion, no. no. I'm talking about spirit, spirit, spiritual, spiritual, yes, yes, spiritual, yes, 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 yes. Not organized religion. No, it certainly it does, because there is force beyond all this, and I have no problem with that. Uh, what I, what I, I think the, the interesting thing is here, and this is the point I wanted to make, um, it's always evidence, always proof you want, and beyond just 
mediumship, which is, uh, I mean, somebody talking, and you have to get the evidence from the nature of what you get. Here you have cameras. And much of it is photographic paper. A lot of it has only been imprinted. It doesn't require a camera. It requires only one thing, a light-sensitive surface of some kind and a photography medium in the near vicinity. Those are the only things you need. Are you sure the light doesn't play tricks? No. no. When my mother appeared on, the, on camera channel 5, all the light in the studio, all the light was one yellow 60-watt bulb to show our hands that we weren't doing any any any, any monkey business. And he, uh, it was Mike Wallace who brought the paper. It was Mike Wallace who opened it, tore the, the, the seal on my, on my request, and it was his B who threw the 20 sheets, one by one, into the development fluid, all of which he had furnished, a non-believer. And as soon as the photographic paper hit the light-sensitive surface, something appeared that shouldn't be there. Hand writing, other faces. After a while, I looked at it, and there was my mother. This wasn't the first thing. Uh, Wallace didn't know what my mother looked like. Myers didn't know what my mother looked like. No way. And I didn't do it. No way. See? Who else was in the studio besides you? Yeah, here. Who else was there besides you and Mike Wallace? Who else is what? In the studio. studio? Nobody. We were, there were three of them. John Myers, of course, the medium. Ah. We were up there. Um, Myers, in, in, I was in the middle. Myers to my left and Wallace to my right. So tell us more about Myers. Huh? Myers' name keeps coming up. Who was he? John with? Myers. John Myers was a very strange man. He was what in England is called a dentist, which is a kind of a, a low-level dentist in America. Uh, he discovered at a certain time that he had the gift of when he was in a place and somebody took a picture, things appeared on them. And eventually he... Um, went to a woman named Mrs. Dean, who did this professionally. And when she died, he took over her studio for a while, while still being a dentist. And he came to America. And uh, he, here I heard of him. He didn't need this. He was, uh, at that point, he was vice president of a big corporation. And uh, I thought he should be on, on television but under the strictest test conditions. And we did it. See? And when I uh, showed the pictures afterwards to Mike Wallace, his comment was, and I quote, well, I'll be damned. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle. <laughs> you want to ask me something? Yeah, actually, I had a couple of questions. Yeah. But the one about the picture of your mother, yeah. done by John Myers. Yeah. How is it that her face is so sharp and clear, and yet there's none of the rest of her body? And on all of these other photographs, it's just blurs of Well, I, I must blame to some degree. This machine, they're all very sharp. But it's some, they were all upside down and left side. They were totally they were confused, OK? But still, um, she's also surrounded by a white. Did you notice the white thing? Yes. Like yes. cotton? Yes. Uh, the way it works, if they, if they want to send a picture of themselves, they have to remember. They have to remember what they looked like or what they would like to look like. Or a picture of themselves. They have to remember a photograph of themselves. They cannot send thoughts of themselves. There has to be an existing photograph somewhere or painting or whatever. And then the next step is energy is drawn from the body, from the solar plexus area uh, of the body of the photography medium. This is a albumin substance, it's whitish and wet, and it is related to sexual fluid. This is the positive first on the uh, light sensitive surface, and then onto that comes the picture. At least that's what I've been told. Yes? Well, okay, another question. Um, 
You, you said that in these circumstances, uh, with all these photos you showed, there was no question of any no trickery. There was no possibility of any fraud. No. And yet, um, I'm a little cautious uh, when we're dealing with professional photographers, just because they have the technical ability to create fraud if they wanted to. Yeah, but just because somebody has a gun, he's not a murderer. Well, they, the two cases of photographers we have here, one of them is somebody who was very unpleasantly surprised. You mean the Vivian Lee thing? Well, yeah, you see, well, that happened to before me, she was known to be dead. But the negative could have been doctored later. Yeah, it was doctored. And you said yourself these were publicity photographs. No, no, she, no, no, no. She went there for her own publicity photograph. And Vivian Lee had died to, without the world knowing it. But surely the negative was still in the photographer's studio. There was no the negative of this big, No such portrait exists. There is no negative of this portrait. It doesn't exist. So the one of Sybil Leak? Yes, and the negative has clearly this imposition of another, another, another person. There's no well, question about that. Well, I'm sure it would have been easy to get Vivian no Lee's way, image no way. from the There was no way that you could, nobody did that. Nobody was interested in that. And the other one, know? the How professional you know? photographer, where the teacher appeared, there was no way this could have happened either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looked like a, a dual exposure. No, it was not. It's not. I mean, you can... Probably there was a picture of the teacher from the year before class. There was. Program. That's probably. Now, you talk now like yeah. a typical skeptic. Yeah, there was no picture yeah. before he died. When the other pictures taken, I've researched and, and, and the same photographer had not taken those classes. No, the year I, that's a question I would ask first. But one yeah. has to. No, no. Yeah. I, I have two questions. Yeah, first, I'm louder so the others can hear. I have two questions. The first is, if on the other side you can change your form, appear younger, yes. or add glasses, or yes. whatever, <laughs> then how do we know when we get a photograph, say, of your mother? It's not my dead grandmother just imposing that image on. I mean, it doesn't seem to prove anything if, on the other side, anybody could take any well, shape or image. I don't. I don't want. think the other side is, is a circus. Uh, merely, she, my mother did project her picture to be recognized. That was the whole point. I hadn't had any connection with her, and this was her way of communicating who showed that she was still alive but, on the other but side. But you, you admitted that on the other pictures there were other things that weren't your mother. There was writing, you said. Yeah, but there were other people, too. Other people, they just don't happen to be in the studio. There was writing. I didn't follow up on any of this because, first of all, this is a television program. There's just so much you could do. And this was something I could immediately verify. The other thing I couldn't. My, my second question is on the ethereal body or the second body you were talking about. There weren't, there weren't, there was nothing as good as this that I could have worked with, no. Okay, but on the, the second body idea for the other side, does every energy form exist on the other side? I mean, do animals, do plants, all these are patterns of energies, not to well, mention you know, uh, radio waves. Put it this way, I work with existing things. I don't speculate. Speculation, I leave the Wall Street. Uh, I have something here that is investigated. I exclude any fraud, any other self-delusion. When I have that, that's all I need. You know, you can't keep on speculating. The picture of the monks towards the end of your presentation, Yeah. Um, I wasn't able to determine from my position whether the faces of the monks all reflected the same face, but it looked like they might have. I presume you've studied this more carefully. Very carefully, and I might also say uh, the projection is somewhat better. Um, the, uh, there are four monks, two rows of monks, and uh, they're enveloped with flames, enveloped by flames. No, I'm, not ta I'm talking about the one in the golf course. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, well, it seemed to me that if there were one monk, and he was, well, I presume that was not a Polaroid because he would have seen the flash. So it's not a Polaroid camera. It was taken at night. No, it was not a Polaroid so camera. It was not taken at night. Speculation is not a Wasn't it night. taken at night? No, it, it was taken like at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and it was taken with a, uh, you know, these two, two lengths, what were they called? The, uh, 
when you had two lenses. Stereoscopic. Uh, stereo, stereo, <coughs> stereo, right. stereo camera. It was taken with a stereo camera. Uh, so there are two pictures obtained at the same time. A three-dimensional camera? No, it's stereo, it's stereo camera. Well, one thing about that photograph that struck me was that if a single individual had been walking with a candle, let's say, or something of that sort, and it was a very long exposure because it was pretty it was dark. It was not a very long exposure and it was not a single person. Well, the light streak that went across from person to person is pretty much the same as you would get. Well, you can try it, I assure you. And stopping every foot that you took so that the people would come into more resolution <laughs> along with the trail of the light yeah, just that, that's, that's a nice story, it just doesn't stopped. fit. Well, one has to, you know, No, no I know the exposure, area. exact exposure. It was a quick exposure with a stereo camera. It was done by Dr. Van Salsa. And yeah, I have the there? originals. Yeah, yeah, I have the original negatives. You yeah. were there in the thing. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, it's so good yeah. to meet you. After all, it's so good to meet you after all these years of reading your work. Um, uh, what I wanted to know is, um, have you heard of Lawrence Lachane? Hey, what? Lawrence Lachane. Lachane. Doctor Lachane. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. He's a yeah. He's a healer. I I was reading recently his book How to Meditate. Yes. And he had a passage there when he was talking about, like, I guess, a, a chapter on the occult. And he says, well, when you meditate, when you get to a certain level, yes, you're going to be able to do all these things. You're going to be able to see apparitions. You're going to be able to do tele, you know, tele, uh, telepath, telepathy, all this type of stuff. But he says, well, you know, it's like, it's like um, if you were in front of a teacher, the teacher would say, oh, nice child. That's very good. But, but move on. This, you know, move on yeah, past yeah, it. I was very disappointed. Ask Larry Lachane, because I really can't answer for him. Yeah, I just wondered if you... Uh, you I, I'm a technical uh, researcher, yeah. and the evidence is there that I'm satisfied. Yes. About halfway through the presentation, there was a photograph of a... Um, looked like a gray-haired woman in her oh. garden with trellising over the top. A what? She had a... A gray-haired woman in her garden outside with trellising over the top. She was yeah. one of the yeah. adepts. I wonder if anybody else saw anything else in that picture, or do I really need glasses? It seemed to me yeah. that on the upper left-hand side of the picture, just above this trellis That's work, possible if you were I saw yeah. a young woman's head, or did I? Thank you, because, uh, I, you know, this is Miss Bauer. In, uh, right. Yeah. Yeah, I was so taken with the materialization of the woman, the naked woman, so to speak, mm -hmm. that I didn't look anywhere for, for the other details. It may well be. This happens. You know? Did anyone else see anything no. there? The upper, uh, upper left-hand no. corner. Uh, maybe it's the top of the tree. Maybe well, I, I look at it again. Look yeah, and see I look at it again. What I, that I, thing is, there's yeah. something there. I have uh, published uh, the, the post of the photographs in a book called Life Beyond. And for those who are interested, um, I'm pretty sure what we have here is this general and photographs, but yes. Hi, um, I was a professional photographer. I can't hear you. I was a professional photographer for many years in the yeah. 80s, and um, Carlos Osis asked me at one point to take pictures from yeah. him. I can't but he always hear wanted me yeah. to have like a signed affidavit from the person doing the developing yeah. and um, the person doing the printing saying that no other yeah. hands were involved. And my concern is that, um, you know, this is really based on your um, well, in most cases, testimony that these are authentic. But, I mean, as any photographer or videographer knows, I mean, there's so many ways to manipulate an image oh, yes. that I just, I mean, I can't accept I actually, the I agree with you, as, um, but they were not under these conditions. That's but, the point. But, but we're dependent on, on you to tell us what those conditions oh, are. Oh, but, we don't but I tell you, it depends on what I have found out. What I found, I have gone after the negative. I have gone when there is a negative. <laughs> I was there. But you're not a professional photographer. You know, a negative can be manipulated I am a photographer. in so many different ways. A professional I'm also a photographer. And I, I have uh, published three books of photography, yes. I know what can be done. Mm -hmm. And it, it hasn't been done. I just feel like if you work with a team, you know, no, and well, everyone I, just I, I, I'm sorry, but... It's just uh, difficult because, I, I guess because it's just... We're just relying because on, on somebody has a gun doesn't mean that he's a murderer. 
you know. But in, in this case, the whenever a photographer, a professional photographer is involved, I was also involved from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I inspected or provided the film or the cassette, and there was no way in which anything could have been slipped in. And the development was done on the spot with Polaroid. The um, um, uh, there just wasn't anything. Just because it's possible doesn't mean it has to be. No, of course not. But I guess yeah. what I'm suggesting is... If well, I, I the think team. it's a, a legitimate question. But I asked this question a long mm -hmm. time ago already. Because I was there. Yes. Who, uh, who claimed this was Vivian Lee? Because didn't look oh, like Vivian Lee. Oh, but uh, that was identified, of course. <laughs> she had a relationship with Vivian Lee. She was who a close was friend. Lee Sybil Lee. Yes. She had a sitting with her just a few days before her death. Oh. And um, she knew her very well. Oh, sure, it's, it, it, it was identified. Yeah. Has anybody described the physical appearance of the other side uh, that you know of? The physical. Uh, is there a physical appearance of the other side? Of what? Like, like cities or. or uh, yes, that uh, is what I just finished this book, but it's not published yet. It's not published yet. It's, not published yet. it's uh, mm -hmm. uh, beyond that. It's, it's the protocols of this fabulous meeting. When it gets published, then uh, there you have all that in there, his, you know, his work. Do people yeah. live in houses? Or mm -hmm. do, 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 do people that passed on have a house? Or they have everything we have. Yeah. They assured me again and again, they have everything we have, well, have whenever they want. want it. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. I was shocked to hear this. But, uh, that's why I read the book. Yeah. yeah. Is the um, astral body the same? What? The astral the, body. Yeah, the etheric body, inner body. Is it yeah. the same body that would uh, would manifest on the other side? The yes. astral body, because I I have seen occasionally people's astral bodies. Yeah. So once their physical body is gone, that astral body it's that I saw would, is yeah. the one that would go over there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Yes, somebody? Oh, I didn't want to interrupt. No, I think you have to accept my word that I've talked to the people who did it if I wasn't there. I've looked in the laboratories. None of this material <coughs> is fake. I don't say that there couldn't be fakes, of course. But lately that is less and less because um, there are just too many ways to, to check up on things. It's become much much more difficult to fake. Now, in, in, the, um, uh, in the time when John Myers was working, um, he was accused by uh, an English, English uh, journalist uh, of having concocted some psychic ph photography. And he sued him and won because uh, he had the wet plates, the plates. The, uh, there was no way, you know, the plates were there. The the uh, uh, it's easy to accuse, but uh, if you have the evidence to answer, then I don't think it's a good idea. Yeah. Was the segment um, with Mike Wallace where your mother's picture appeared? Yeah. Was that actually broadcast? Oh sure. Does footage of oh, that yeah. still yeah. exist? Yeah. Was that the show called? <coughs> uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, something East. Uh, yeah, on Channel Five, New York, yeah. oh. Metro Media. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Would be interesting to yeah. see. Yeah. And uh, uh, you know, it's, but this sort of thing um, is far from unique. Uh, it is not anything that uh, mean anything more than the need to communicate. And as such, as such, you have to accept it. I think it is a valuable tool in addition to having sessions with trans mediums or with clairvoyants, because here you have visual things as well, as well as information about people. Yes. So this is so this photography was Curlian, right? What? It was Curlian photography then? Now Curlian photography is absolutely worthless from my point of view, oh. because it puts an alien element into into uh, a living living being and then it, uh, what you get then is not what you get from the other side is what you put in. You have a totally different aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, traveling photography has nothing to do with it. But I think if you want to see whether you can be uh, a psychic mm -hmm. photographer, whether you have the talent, mm -hmm. I suggest you, you try 
in going to places that are known to be haunted, for instance, um, and you'll find them, not only in my books, but there you'll find them for sure, um, and go with a fast camera, go with a Polaroid camera, and take pictures and see what happens. You might, you might have the gift, you see. There's no way of telling until you try it. I mean, the, the uh, Winchester Cathedral monks uh, walking in the aisles, I had no idea that others had taken pictures there before. I only found it out later when, when, I, when I did some research. I happened to be interested in, in the cathedral. And we arrived there on a rainy day at 11 o'clock. Rainy days are very good for this for some reason. <laughs> and uh, I took lots of pictures in the aisle, and there were some ordinary pictures, but then there were this and another one uh, showing a row of monks. Well, the monks hadn't walked in 400 years. Yeah. And why not go back and conduct mm -hmm. a control? Why not go back and conduct a con when I control watch study? Because that, I must be getting deaf. I can't hear. That it. cathedral is haunted. I've been there, and I know it's Where? haunted. Mm -hmm. Winchester. Where? The cathedral that you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. You know. Why it? not? Yes. Why yeah. not go back and conduct a controlled study? Well, I didn't know when. I, this happened many years ago. I only did research afterwards, and um, then I found out that others had seen the monks. Um, but I went in there just to, for a historical church. Yes, you didn't answer my question. Interesting. Yeah. I had no idea until I saw the picture. Yeah. You said something very interesting what? just now, that people might have the gift of psychic photography, yeah. which makes me wonder if the image on the film is coming from the spirit entity or from the photographer. No, 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 you don't understand. The gift of psychic photography doesn't create pictures. It only acts as a camera. Your body is the camera. That's all it does. You don't create images. And if you don't have psychic photography gift, mediumship, nothing will happen. I think what, yeah. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I, I think what yeah. Ruth was saying was that how do we know it's coming from the other world as opposed to just being imprinted, say, for lack of a better word, telekinetically by the living entity, like tell yeah, series. Yeah, it depends on the conditions. I know of no case where a person who is a psychic photographer has created an image on film or on paper that does not come from an outside source. I don't know of any. Well, what about Ted Sirius with his work? With, Ted Sirius with working with Jewel Ted Eisenberg. Sirius is a unique case, and uh, he projected. Uh, and this was not quite like he didn't project dead things, dead people. He didn't deal with that. He projected distant viewing. What he dealt with is distant viewing. He would see things at a distance and then project them on film. That's well, he, a different. Field. He also did celebrities, not not unlike some of the things we saw here. In but he did not. He did not project any spirits. Well, but he projected images. He project, projected images, yeah. but not of the dead. That's a difference. Well, you know, a thought form is a thought form. No, 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 no. That makes a difference. Yeah. Do you think an ionized environment would be interesting to take pictures? Of? Yes, it might help. Yeah, and when, especially like humid a, area. You mentioned the rain, or maybe after. Yeah, I, now I'm talking about experiences. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yes. Or well, you wanted something? I just wanted to follow up. I think a little bit. I can hear you. Um, if you took a picture in Winchester Cathedral and the monks appeared, yeah. What ways would there be to follow up on that experience? to learn more about when they appeared, how they appeared, how often they well, appeared. I've done whether... that and published it. I'm sorry, then. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Which of your books, Dr. Yeah. Holtz? Oh, it's in several of my books. Okay. The latest one is called Ghosts, and before that in other books, because then I discovered that there were a number of instances where people had taken pictures there before, and uh, I didn't know about it. Have you had, have you run into ghosts of like of slaves or, or any any of the like have here I run in New York? Into ghosts? Yeah, ghosts of slaves or anything from the graves that have been dug up architecturally. Have you run into no. you've gotten no, into not so far. No. Not so far. Okay. All right.
Not so far, but I'm sure with Dr. Holzer, if there's anything there, he'll dig it up. For, now. <laughs> yeah. for sure. So I think we'll uh, know where it is. For sure. I want to thank you very much. I want to wish you a happy birthday because I understand it's a birthday yeah, yes, coming, coming yeah, there. 